Grand Rising, y'all. It is Celestia here for the last day of the 21-day ITIL cleanse. If I'm going to be fully transparent, your girl had some eggs today. I just say this is the last day because this is the last day of me documenting how I had felt and experienced uh, throughout this 21-day period. Uh, I started off the day with some hard-boiled eggs, which I haven't had eggs in so long. <laughs> Eating them was a very nice experience. Um, I had them with a whole bunch of grapes and some Moringa tea. I ate that quite a few hours ago, and I'm still full of satiety. I'm not sure what I'm going to do for lunch yet. I'm not sure what I'm going to do for dinner yet. What I do know is that I am going to go grocery shopping shortly. And as I was saying yesterday, I was thinking more about ancestral ways of eating, fully listening to my body, and regaining some of the strength that I had lost. So even though I am lactose intolerant, and to be honest, I don't think I'm actually lactose intolerant. I think it's that I cannot tolerate the way that dairy is prepared here largely however there are a few things that i've always been able to eat without issue and even looking to my own family we are also able to eat without issue the first is butter so i am going to reincorporate grass-fed butter kerry gold is a pretty decent uh brand for it so i'm going to look for that when i go shopping today um and goat milk but I'd rather stick to having goat milk when I'm not in the U.S., so I'm going to refrain from that. But I'm just saying, goat milk, goat cheese, and butter, I've always been fine with having. So those are things that I'm not inherently opposed to, and I have grass-fed butter on my own shopping list for today. I also have fish. I am going to buy based off of what I can either get as wild-caught um, or the ocean raised where they're not in the tanks, but they're actually in the water. So I will either be buying salmon, whiting, cod, or haddock, whatever is available. Um, so I'm reintroducing fish more, reintroducing butter, um, and I'm happy for it, honestly, because at the end of the day, what matters most is listening to my body. I had noticed certain changes um, throughout this period of eating. It's like, I was going on an incline towards feeling better, and then I reached a point where I was kind of in the middle, and then I started to notice some declining. Like I said, I think maybe six or seven days in that my forehead wrinkles were reducing, and they were. But I noticed that the further I was going into this, they were coming back like stronger and stronger. And to a certain extent, my face was feeling like a bit sallow and a bit sunken in. I had lost and a crazy amount of weight from when I started um, eating this way about 21 days ago into now. I am almost six feet tall. I am five feet, 10 inches. Prior to eating this way, I was 135 pounds. That is already on the low end for me. Um, I prefer to weigh anywhere from 145 to 155 pounds with lean muscle and fat. Um, but I was 135 when I started. I went from 135 to 128 pounds. And so by truly listening to my body and listening to my inner voice, I realized that the main lesson that I was supposed to take is to eat real fresh, whole foods, none of the processing, etc. As I had discussed yesterday, I was learning more about blood type and how it pertains to diet. I am type O. And from what I understand, my ancestors, and I mean, I, I know a decent amount about my ancestors because to a certain extent, my family keeps track. I know on my Haitian side, we have, uh, we are from largely West and Central Africa. I know on my Jamaican side, we are indigenous Arawak, we are African, and we are also Syrian. So I know that these are all ancient peoples that had a very varied way of eating. I was looking more into various things pertaining to health and nutrition and looking like with an unbiased perspective at the traditional food ways of my people and they ate eggs and like i said i grew up eating every single kind of meat to be honest i grew up eating chicken cow fish ox goat pork all of it all of it the only one that i really am like i don't know about eating this is pork and that's because i'm in the united states maybe maybe when i visit my family in haiti i will have like pork products because the pigs are not fed absolute garbage right 
But even then, I'm very, very skeptical. I haven't had pig in like years. So the thought of having it, I feel a little, a little averse to. But I grew up eating all those things. And I realized that a lot of the health issues that I had developed growing up, it wasn't because of me eating the animals. Quite the, quite the contrary. I actually developed health issues because of the processed foods that my mother had bought. The processed things. And I realized that had those things been cut out, I would have been fine. So I'm really like re-examining and re-evaluating my food ways. A lot of people on both sides of my family live for very long periods of time, with a few exceptions. The only people in my family that do not live for long periods of time are the people that are malnourished. My grandmother, the one who passed, lived to the age of 91. She was a subsistence farmer. She ate chicken, pigs, cow, ox, goat, fish, all of it. And she lived a very long and healthy life. She, yeah, she had pretty good vision. She was cognizant down to her last day. My other grandmother, who is still living, is 83. She primarily eats fish as her meat of choice, but she's not opposed to other animals. She loves fish. She eats it almost every day if she has the opportunity. And again, she has better vision than me. She can walk without a cane, which most people in the Western world cannot say at her age. She is very sharp. And so if those are my grandmothers and I'm their descendant, doesn't it make logical sense for me to eat the ways that they ate? The reason that I'm a relatively healthy and strong person is because I have their genes. So if I'm not taking the best care of myself, two generations down, my descendants are going to be like, what the hell were you doing? We're not healthy because of you. We developed issues because of you. So I'm really thinking. And to be really blunt, anything that is pushed by like Bill Gates is not good. <laughs> and he and his ilk are all over the promotion of eating vegan. I think that eating vegetarian is something that you have seen through many cultures for thousands of years. I completely understand why people shun eating animals, right, of their flesh. But eating of eggs or eating of milk is something that a lot of people do. Some of the strongest peoples consume a lot of dairy. I think to the, the Maasai people of Kenya, they're known for being able to jump to extreme heights and they eat a lot of beef and they, they drink a lot of milk. So I think we have to be really honest with ourselves and ask what it is that we're being steered towards. So I'm grateful that I had this cleanse period. I do think that, like I said before, short periods of time eating exclusively no animal product is okay. It can actually help to flush certain things out of your system. But at a certain point, you do need to incorporate animals. Like that's that's just the truth. We're not herbivores and we know that. We're not ruminant animals. We don't have two to four stomachs. That's just not the case. We're not carnivores. Our, we don't have completely smooth digestive systems. Although we have hydrochloric acid, it's not as, my hydrochloric acid is not as strong as my cat's, for example. But we are omnivores. There's no society that has ever been vegan. Like that, that's, that's just the truth, you know? It's, it's, it's the truth. And we have to be very mindful to what it is that we're being pushed towards. The very people that are encouraging eating vegan are the very people, like higher up, I'm not talking about like the regular person, are the very people that think that there's too many humans, are the very people that encourage depopulation. And what a better way to depopulate than to decrease your fertility, to make you weaker, to make you more susceptible to suggestion, and to make it so that it's literally harder for you to have children. And I want to have as many children as my womb will support. So that's what I've learned through this. I have a pretty good shopping list for today. Everything is fresh, real foods, and I'm very, very excited for it. I'm looking forward to rebuilding my body, re rebuilding my strength, regaining my weight, getting my muscle composition back to where I want it to be. And maybe I'll make some videos documenting that as we come along. But thank you for those who have followed me in this journey. I hope that you watched from start to finish just to see where I was and where I'm at. Like even listening to myself right now, I feel more clear and more cognizant when I'm speaking. And that is very, very important. This brain up here <laughs> is largely fat. And try as I might, even when I realize, hmm, this way of eating is not giving me enough fat. And I said, okay, let me eat more avocados. Let me eat more walnuts. Let me eat more um, flax seeds, hemp seeds, and chia seeds. It still wasn't enough. I need saturated fat. I need what you get from animals. And it doesn't make you a bad person. It doesn't make you any less spiritual. 
listen, I come from spiritualists, okay? And none of them were vegan. Like that's that's just the truth. So yeah, that's where I'm at. And this is my second time having tried to eat vegan. You know, I'm someone who I'm very empathetic. I'm very morally driven. I do agree that the industrial farming practices are horrific. I will always stand by that. My family did not practice industrial farming. I come from subsistence farmers on both sides of my family. Having proper animal husbandry is the way. So that's like, that's really what we should be leaning towards. But shunning animals in its entirety is shunning our genetic inheritance. And I do think that it leads us down a path of our own destruction. So yeah, I may check in later, but I honestly feel like I've said plenty. Good evening, y'all. It is Celestia here with my last check-in for this 21-day ITIL cleanse. Funnily enough, I was talking to my ex today and I told him, I said, you know, I think after all, I have gone from the vegan to regenerative farming pipeline. And he was laughing because he said that he saw that coming a lot for a long time. He said that he knew where my heart really was with all of it, which is knowing my background, knowing that I come from subsistence farmers on both sides of my family, and knowing how both plants and animals are honestly supposed to be treated, that I was just trying to go back, right? Go back to how I was raised like in a different generation because I was born in the United States but both my mother and my father were born in Jamaica and Haiti respectively and then you know I was taught a lot of what they were taught though and it's amazing how when you reorient your way of thinking that literally it's like life is almost like a role-playing game and the options shift so as I told you guys, I did my grocery shopping, uh, definitely looking a bit different this week compared to the last couple of weeks. I went and got some grass-fed butter, which I actually used um, with some frozen dumplings that I sauteed. I finished those, uh, my sister and I. I'm not going to be having them again because they do have processed ingredients, it's just we were short on time, and so that's what we put together for lunch. I just figured I'd use it, get it over with have it out of our house and I feel a deeper sense of satiety having eaten those vegetable dumplings than I had eating them in the past and I know in the past I would always heat them up with avocado oil and while I don't have issue with avocado and I do think avocado oil is actually not too bad to put on your skin I don't think it's the best to cook with because of the uh, saturated to unsaturated fat ratio there's a lot of unsaturated fats and so it's more prone to um, having the chemical structure change a bit. Granted, it does have a very high smoke point, so it's not the worst thing to cook with, but I do feel like if there's an oil that I want to cook with, it would be coconut because it has a very high saturated fat ratio. I also love how it adds such a beautiful sweet aroma uh, to certain foods. But yeah, I heated up the dumplings and that, and that came out really good. I feel very satisfied even though it was like a full like vegetarian dish um i let's see what else did i get at the store i bought a pound of wild caught salmon and i got a little over a pound of lamb chops and i'm thinking meals like dinners for this week i'm leaning towards butternut squash curry um so i'm gonna try to make that i just have some chickpeas on the way so once those come i'm going to make a curry out of that and then I want to make probably the lamb chops towards the end of the week have that with some asparagus uh, and some other vegetables make a vegetable medley I want to try to see maybe soaking or sprouting my brown rice before I have it with because I know rice is really the only grain I can tolerate so I want to try to make it even easier to digest and then you know sometime later on next week I'll probably have the salmon later on that day I was um, just thinking about what I had talked about earlier with the lactose intolerance and I know I can have goat milk fine because I've had it before and goat cheese I'm fine with and like I said I'm not actually lactose intolerant it's the way that milk is prepared if I was lactose intolerant I could not have the lactose from other animals and so I looked up um, raw milk near me because I've heard about raw milk I know it's full of 
health, right? I know my very ancestors, again, had raw milk just from goats. I found a place that was about 20 minutes away that has raw milk. Um, then I remembered that my mom had gotten some eggnog from a farmer that's supposed to be pretty nearby. So I looked into their uh, website and yeah, they're literally like a town over <laughs> and they have raw milk and they raise their own animals and they also have like locally sourced uh, seafood. So I think next week moving forward, I want to visit the farm. I want to get some raw milk so I can see, you know, what's the hype. <laughs> um, and I am thinking of starting to order um, my fish from there. They have cod, they have haddock, they have all the kinds that are like seasonal right now. I still feel really on the fence regarding beef due to like my personal reasons. So I want to pray on it. But I am interested in um, getting some liver. I haven't had liver in a very long time. And I know a lot of people don't like it, but I actually always liked it. And they only they have it for like $8 a pound. So not bad. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm really interested because it seems like I have this opportunity to go for exactly what I wanted to. I didn't even know that that place was like much of a thing until my perspective had shifted and then I bothered looking. I think for a lot of us, we actually live closer to farms than we think we do. I live in the burbs, um, so you know, I'm a pretty good ways away from the city. And yeah, apparently I'm not that far away at all from farms. <laughs> so it makes me really happy. Um, I think if I have a positive experience, I'm just going to buy my meats from the farm moving forward instead of um, getting it from the grocery store. I guess salmon would be the exception. And I like going to farmer's markets. They're not really available too much this time of year, so I may just stick with getting my produce from there. It's just wild. I really went down the vegan to not only eating animals again, but local farming pipeline. And on my Tumblr, my banner is walking the ancestral path. I started ancestor veneration like actively and consciously a couple of years ago because of that wisdom that I knew my people of the past contain. And they had brought me back to myself in many ways, right? Honoring our African and indigenous traditions, honoring like uh, honoring myself, the beauty of meditation, the beauty of nature, like even <sighs> all behind me, it's real nice. It's really nice here. And I remember when I was at my uh, ancestor altar and I said to them the first time, hey, I agree with you guys for a lot of things, but you know, I don't think I, I don't think I want to eat animals. Like I think we might have gone wrong there. And I just remember not really receiving much. And it's just funny because, you know, I think my, my family, wherever they are watching me, they're probably like, girl, you were a fool. And we just had to kind of watch you stumble about and come to your own conclusions and be a little less stubborn. So yeah, here I am. I am really happy. I feel so full of energy. It's wild. Like I, after I go on this walk, uh, which I'm not gonna do for long, maybe like 20, 30 minutes, I feel like working out. So I'm going to probably do some body weight exercises. I'm thinking of investing in like a good weight set so I can start doing some strength training. I want to, uh, with rebuilding my body, of course, focusing on what I'm putting into myself between eggs and meat and fish, um, and good weightlifting, good flexibility, and cardio. I don't necessarily want to eat meat like every single day, but I don't think it's harmful to have a serving like once a week or so, you know? So if I'm having curries and stuff for the first half of the week, when that's all said and done, like I said, I'll make my lamb chop and I know that'll last me for however many days mix it into salads or have it with like various vegetables and things like that. I appreciate, of course, having like explored the idle and raw vegan way of eating because um, there are a lot of dishes and recipes that I definitely am going to utilize. Like I don't see myself using pasta for spaghetti because I really just I don't digest wheat too well. So I will stick to using zucchini and then I can put whatever else it is that I wind up putting in there. Um, the various smoothies I really appreciated being introduced to dates which I mean I had them but like not extensively and really exploring all the different ways they could be used I really appreciated um, there's a lot that I appreciated from it but like I said I recognize that it's really not for me at the end of the day 
Um, and one thing that I've always felt really strongly about is that I don't want to eat in a way that requires supplementation because I strongly believe that even in spite of all of the destruction that has been wrought upon this earth, that mother nature absolutely gives us everything that we need through nature. And I found that like, if you're eating, like at least if even eating vegan, like I don't consider chlorella a supplement because it does come from a plant, but it is a supplement at the same time because it's processed. I can't just go and have the chlorella and eat it right then and there. You have to break the cell wall. Like how do you, how, how is that done? Can I do that at home? I don't think so, right? Versus if I want B12 in a more readily accessible form, I can, um, I can have some eggs or in the future, I can have any kind of milk, raw milk, raw cow's milk, goat milk. I can have some salmon. I could have some meat. If I want vitamin A, not in the beta carotene form that I get from, say, like butternut squash or um, carrots, but in the retinol version, which helps my retinas because I have been on an eye healing journey, it's better to get it from the actual animals because it's in a readily available form. It's not to say that I can't convert the beta carotene into retinol, but you need saturated fat. That's why they even say with carrots, carrots are not ideal to have raw. You want to have them prepared in like butter or a saturated oil, right? Like, you know, I guess I wouldn't really do coconut oil with carrots, but you know, have some sauteed carrots and then put a drizzle of olive oil or something. A lot of our vegetables we consumed with oil and that's because we knew inherently that we need that presence in order to fully absorb. I definitely think that there are some foods that are better off consumed in a raw state. And then there are foods that are better off cooked. And then again, for me personally, I'm absolutely better off eating animal foods. I feel very in tune with myself. I think that you have a lot of people that are very empathetic. I know that I'm a very empathetic person. And to be honest, I feel like in many ways, my empathy was taken advantage of by these industries, by these people and these powers and these entities that wish to use our compassion against us. The issue is not that we eat animals. We are part of the circle of life. Yes, we have this beautiful, deep sense of awareness, but so does everything else around us. Plants are aware. Animals are aware. Plants will fight and defend themselves. Animals will fight and defend themselves. People say that plants don't feel pain, but that, that's not true. Plants do react. Plants absolutely experience stress. Plants react to vibration. So we have to acknowledge that we live in a cyclical environment and we're not bad people for eating what it is that we need to eat. It's a matter of being respectful. And to be honest, I think as more and more of us return back to our roots, we'll actually be able to undo those very industries that we know cause a lot of harm. We'll be able to seek out our local farmers. Maybe some of us will become farmers ourselves. Maybe some of us will lean towards growing food. My family, we actually do grow food in our backyard. And maybe I'll do some vlogs in the springtime um, to show you guys like how we do our stuff. But even I know we have to fight off insects. We have to fight off other animals when we grow our stuff. Um, with insects, we, we make our own like natural herbicides. With animals, we try to plant companion plants that they don't like, or we have to set up netting because we don't really like to kill the animals, but we know that people do at times to be able to protect the plants. So it's like, to be quite frank, vegan is not real. There is no such thing as vegan. If I'm having kalalu from my backyard, I have to keep aphids away. If we're having raspberries from our raspberry bush, we have to be mindful of, of other insects and beings. And we know insects and beings react to things, right? We all react because we all have a certain level of awareness and sentience. So <laughs> for those who are still here, thank you for listening to my TED Talk. Thank you for being with me throughout these 21 days. And yeah, I have so much more in store. So if you liked this whole series, if you would like to see a little bit more of my face, <laughs> and if you would like to see, I guess, a bit of my my journey and my recovery, it feels like, to be honest, from vegan back into my fully restored state, then definitely subscribe, because I'll probably make some videos about that here and there. I think the next thing that I want to make, though, is a update on my locks. Um, I have had my locks for about two and a half months now, so I would love to talk about it and how this, like, semi freeform journey is going. So yeah, thank you as always. Have a great evening. Stay blessed and I'll see you when I see you.